<laughs> Fidget cube ASMR. Oh my god. <laughs> Ooh, Sophie wins. It's my worm. <laughs> oh, is that the worm? It's my worm. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to another episode of Midlight Crisis, a real podcast hosted by three grown-up biologists revisiting books from our teens, and it's totally cool. I am one of your hosts, Sophie, and today I have... (laughs) I still haven't figured out a way to (laughs) intro this smoothly, but I have a randomly generated bird with a superpower. (laughs) Uh uh-huh yeah uh that i am i guess so the bird with a superpower that i am today is a water breathing coffee pigeon Ooh! oh hells yes is that sam which is (laughs) yeah which is really ironic since of all the people on this podcast i'm the only one who doesn't drink coffee (laughs) oh man but i don't like pigeons they scare okay, me okay maybe it's me i love pigeons i'm a water go. coffee pigeon no i am that's the whole oh. point <laughs> oh yes you're my friend <laughs> <laughs> no it's one of those things where people are like wow why was it called a coffee pigeon and it's gonna be like well the base of their feathers is actually oh God, a coffee yeah. color and that's why they're <laughs> i will never not be <laughs> about the friggin black belly rosefish oh my god yeah. oh. named after the fact that if you kill it and cut it open it's black on the inside <laughs> yeah yeah really helpful Obviously. for identifying it in the field thank you taxonomists i mean rosefish is really helpful <laughs> that's true <laughs> anyway who are you guys <laughs> or what are you guys i guess yeah i don't know if i can top that one but my name is Sam, and today I am a time traveling Caplin Osprey. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> also, yeah, th- very accurate, I would say. Yeah. I, w- I wish I could time travel. That'd be oh cool. Oh my gosh, right? Oh my yeah, god. god. I'm imagining that a Caplin Osprey would be like smaller than a so normal small. Osprey. <laughs> like it would be yeah. so small. It would be like <laughs> puffin sized. Oh Aww. my god, yes. Oh, it's- <laughs> so cute in my brain (laughs) it time travels to back before the capelin (laughs) i just had a really terrible thought about time traveling though and it's like if i like went back in time right now what are the chances that i would bring covid to the place no whoa (laughs) i don't even know i know i don't even think i could now in good conscience ever time travel because i'd be like One, I could either pass a disease and, like, completely destroy humanity as we know it, or two, go to the future and then pick up a horrible disease and bring it back (laughs) and then also destroy humanity. Clearly, living through a pandemic has not affected me (laughs) at all. No, we're all doing great. (laughs) Yeah. (sighs) Well, I'm not stressed out. My name is Hannah, and my bird today... Feels like it needs a particular kind of like voice to introduce it, so I'm gonna see oh if boy. I can do it. Okay. <clears throat> I feel like it needs to be I'm Banshee Bill Dipper. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that voice. Wow. Me neither. I was expecting it to come out a different way, but we'll go with it. Banshee Bill <laughs> Dipper. Amazing. I can't believe you're in the Gravity Falls fandom. Bill Dipper. <laughs> Wait, is Bill... <laughs> Bill is the character in... Is Bill the, like, evil Illuminati? Yeah, he's the triangle. The yeah. The evil triangle. The evil triangle. Is, yep. is there a banshee in Gravity Falls? No, actually. No. Whoa. But there is a dipper. <laughs> that I did know. <laughs> yeah. Wow, what a good name. It made me laugh <laughs> I mean, a lot. I mean, species. What a good species. <laughs> that sounds right. Birds do sound like banshees sometimes. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> they do love to scream. They do be screaming. They do be screaming. Anyway, the reason we have superpower <laughs> bird names is because we're yes. reading the superpower bird people book, which is Maximum Ride. <laughs> so, if you guys want to tell us what happened in the four chapters that we read this week, <laughs> please. All right. Go ahead. 
Well, considering these two chapters were maybe only like four pages, I shockingly wrote a decent amount. So here we go. Nice. Chapter five starts us off running right into a fight sequence with a lot of chaos going on. The main things are that the erasers ambushed the kids. The kids are all pretty banged up. Max somehow blows the eardrums out of one of the erasers. And at the end of the eraser that captures Mac turns out to be a familiar face to her. And his name is Ari, who just so happens to be Jeb's son, who was seven years old last time she saw them. And she was pretty shocked to see him as an eraser. For those who forget, Jeb is the adult who used to take care of the kids and then disappeared two years ago. Mm -hmm. Anyways. Ari slams his foot into Max's face and just like Aragon, she passes out into <laughs> chapter six, which yeah. starts us off with yeah. Gasman trying to wake her up. Uh, <laughs> she apparently comes to pretty quick though, because they all quickly discover that the erasers have only taken Angel and the black Humvee they're escaping in with her is still in range of the kids. So even though all of them have quite literally had the shit beaten out of them, <laughs> they take off after the erasers and angel and Max lets her wings spread and flies after them. That's, wow. that's, that's mine. Amazing. That's that. yeah. yeah. Well, in chapter seven and eight, we find out that Max's dream from chapter one wasn't exactly how they escaped from the school and rather Jeb allegedly felt sorry for the kids and kidnapped them away. She also confirms that her wings are supported by her shoulder muscles, which makes my neck hurt just thinking about it yep. personally. Oh my god. And then they fly information at this truck. Fang hits it with some tree branches, and they realize that the truck is heading for a helicopter. They manage to reach the helicopter at about the same time as the Humvee does, but the erasers have guns and were not recently unconscious, so they manage to escape with Angel. The whole flock is terrified and reacts as you might expect a bunch of kids and young teens to react. Max has to fly off and have a private meltdown at the top of a tree before she returns to the other four and they decide they need a plan B. Wow. It's just wow. A lot of emotion so much. in these chapters. Yeah, it I was, was thinking about yeah. it and like every line something happens. So writing yeah. the summaries are probably going to be about the same length. As yeah. chapters. <laughs> it's, it's really hard. It's like exactly like you said, it's, it's like action, action, action. So it's like, oh, sh like, what the heck do I include? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I did do my best, but like, yeah, <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> the very first line of the first chapter was Jeb had trained us not to think just to act. Yeah. And my immediate thought was, the Aragon school of thought. No think, <laughs> just magic. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> so I like that little callback. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Although I find it. Yeah. I mean, like, why didn't they just fly away then? <laughs> yeah. Can they not take off? Yeah. Do just they need like... a running start? Like yeah. Maybe they need a running start. So far, Max has just taken off off a cliff. Yeah. Oh, wait. I guess at the end of the last chapter she just like jumps <laughs> oh true she does do that hmm. i i guess the idea is like the erasers are way faster i think it's more that they're stronger and okay bigger. i would assume they're probably faster on land whereas yeah, like probably. the kids are probably faster in air obviously yeah i wonder if it's a case of like the takeoff isn't fast enough to yeah, get away maybe. from an eraser maybe yeah, they yeah. could probably just grab them. Jump, yeah. I mean, if they're, yeah, half-wolf hybrids, I'm assuming their leaping distance is probably pretty Eight high. Foot Eight foot vertical leap. <laughs> Wait, do we know that for sure? Did I miss no. something? No. Oh, Sorry. okay, okay. <laughs> that is a reference. <laughs> it is a meme reference. That I'm it's fine. missing. Anyways. It's fine. One of the things that really stood out to me in this first chapter is that max mentions that mutant kids are much much stronger than regular grown-up humans which makes sense for like the erasers but they're birds are birds yeah. known for being very strong <laughs> yeah sophie are birds known for being strong i mean like the one thing that usually birds are known for being strong about which is like you know their wings flying yeah <laughs> yeah like i don't know there's that urban legend that swans can like break your arm <laughs> oh with their wing like if they oh. hit you with a wing 
my dad did get knocked off a bicycle into a pond by a goose once. Yeah, what? like they're, they're really strong. <laughs> I don't think they can break human bones, but oh like God. if well, especially that's why you're not supposed to get near their nests because yeah. then they'll get like swans are big. Swans are um, so big and aggressive when they're defending their nests. But yeah, so like the thing that's what I would think of, you know, like the strength is in the wings for the downstroke. Yeah. Yeah. And Max specifically says that it's her shoulder muscles. Oh my god. Which means yeah. that like like cuz bird muscles like they don't have a muscle that goes back like on their shoulder blades mm-hmm. to pull their wings up. Mm-hmm. Their muscles like thread through a hole in their humerus and then attach on the yeah. front sternum. Yeah. So all of their up and down muscles both attach on their front. <laughs> and the chest. So it's like so weird that Max specifically says shoulder muscles. Yeah. I, I wanted to like, well, no. I thought about how I should go do some reading about like human musculature and try to figure that out. But I don't care about human physiology, so I wasn't interested <laughs> enough to do that. Full disclosure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, like maybe we can get a better idea of it later, but it's the yeah. whole thing where you're having to again, you're having to add a whole limb on yeah. to like the shoulder structure, you know, because bird wings connect kind of the same way that our shoulders connect in. So you just have to yeah. add a whole other it's set. Just a whole extra shoulder. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, maybe someday someone who knows more about the human body can help us understand how this might work. Yeah, maybe I'll have the desire to look it up. (laughs) Yeah. All of the kids, except Fang, get knocked out in like this chapter or the next. Yeah. (laughs) I have this in my notes. Like, she, Max literally gets kicked hard enough that she should have a concussion. But then comes to quick enough to realize that the erasers are still within their range. Like, yeah, I, I, well, like, it makes no Nudge sense. gets thrown into a tree. Yeah. She gets thrown headfirst into a tree. Oh. At one point, like, Gasman and Iggy are just unconscious, generically, and we don't hear about Fang. But at least, like, the two girls took very significant hits to the head. Yeah. Yeah, this is, like, a thing people bring up about media a lot, that, yeah. like, hitting yes. someone on the head... You need to go to a hospital. Yeah. Yes. If you, especially if, if it's enough to pass out. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think there's something about how they heal. Oh, sure. Slightly faster than humans. Yeah. I mean, you can't have like but... a book for kids without super speedy healing because it's boring if someone's injured for two months. <laughs> yeah. But I feel like this was extreme. And, like, the way it was written was so silly, too. Because it was, like, literally the chapter ends with her getting knocked so hard she should be concussed. And then the next chapter she immediately wakes up again. Like, not even, like, seconds later. So, it was just, (laughs) like, why even include that then? Like... Because you had to go into the next chapter. Yeah. That's why. You had done the chapter. (laughs) I get that it's, yeah, a hook to keep you reading. But it's still dumb. Yeah, I mean, it does seem like she was unconscious for, like, maybe a minute or two. Because, like, maybe. Gasman and Iggy, and I think even Nudge, like, all wake up before Max does. Yeah. Yeah. But still, like, yep. the erasers were still parked close enough that they only had time to really get to their car before the flock is all awake and, like, ready to go again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. More or less. <laughs> More or less. More or less. More or less. Yeah. I did laugh a little bit because I'm a terrible person. So the two parts that I laughed at in this chapter were Max emphasizing that the blind kid's eyes have swollen shut and the fact that they uh, catch Angel and put her in a sack. (laughs) (laughs) Just a little sack. (laughs) Shove her in a bag like a cartoon bird. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is she not a cartoon bird? She is like a cartoon bird, but it's like, <laughs> oh my god. I'm like imagining them like holding her by the scruff of the neck while she like flails all her limbs and then just stuffing her face first into a bag. Like, into a bag. <laughs> yeah. Why uh, not? They've got wings. That's like two extra limbs you have to worry about. Oh my about. god, that's so many. And like Put her, them in the a wings bag. are long and can like whap around. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Annoying. <sighs> 
yeah, the racers are he's seven years old, <laughs> right? No, okay, wait, yeah. <laughs> no, I think he was seven when my understanding was he was seven when she last saw him, which would have been two years ago. So now he's nine. <laughs> Yeah, well, the way it's phrased, because I went back and forth on that, was like, Ari yeah. was Jeb's son, they'd made him into an eraser, he was seven years old. It's like, does that mean he was, as in, like, was in the past, or was, as in, he is currently, but the story is being told in past tense? And it's not Yeah, clear. it is worded very confusing. I'm not sure. I went yeah. with that he was seven and is now nine, I guess. Which still a nine year old having like a rifle or yeah yeah he like... does not act like a child he no Ari the either seven or nine year old single handedly carries Angel's sack from the Humvee to the helicopter yeah he's like adult man sized and part of me <laughs> was thinking that maybe this is like I feel like maybe they talk about it but I think this is, could be part of the mutation mutation yeah is that like i have that feeling as well yeah because like wolves are probably you know adults <laughs> is it accelerated the aging seven. then like so if you turn into an eraser yeah. yeah i think it's i think they like physically mature faster or they just like put on like a crap ton of muscle although now i'm picturing like an adult gym bro body with like the face and voice of a seven-year-old and i hate it <laughs> Yeah, it's awful. It's extremely <laughs> upsetting. Oh, also a muzzle and f- quote furry ears. <laughs> yeah, and red yeah. eyes and <laughs> red eyes, yellow canines. Yeah. Awful raw sewage breath. <laughs> awful raw sewage breath. I know. Why do they have? What do they have? raw do they sewage eat? breath? They must eat raw meat because, like, bad breath is caused by bacteria, right? Yeah, and they just don't brush their teeth. <laughs> yeah, like I guess. do they? I guess. Like, I mean, okay, hear me out. Like, pet yeah. cats and dogs have pretty bad breath, but sure not do. like raw sewage bad breath. No. no. Sorry, gross. raw sewage left out in the hot sun oh, bad yeah. breath. I feel like that's like baleen whales. If you've ever been on a boat and been near like a baleen whale when it exhales, Whoa. it smells Whoa. absolutely atrocious. But yeah. that's because, like, they eat hundreds of pounds of raw fish <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> every yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't like it. I also, no. okay, I kind of want to talk about, I feel like, the biological meat <laughs> of this episode. <laughs> oh, okay. which is like, well, because Well, because they talk about it, like, here, where the implication is... That Ari was a regular child, and yes, then they oh turned him God. into an eraser mm-hmm. after he was born. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this isn't like genetic modification pre-birth. No. no. This no, is and if post. I remember correctly, they did that with like the kids as well. Yeah, I think they mm-hmm. um I think there was something else that was in these chapters that well, Angel had wings also. as a baby. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and they grafted avian DNA onto, onto the human, human DNA. DNA. They must have, I guess, after the birth of these children, grafted the wolf or avian DNA on them and then also, like, somehow reactivated, like, the stem cells and, like, the hox genes and stuff like that that, like, stimulates limb growth. Yeah. Because, like, famously... Mammals are like the uh, yeah. I mean, mammals are the only group that can't regenerate a limb. I mean, like, there's no e- examples. Do birds like, do that? I mean, birds are technically reptiles, <laughs> and reptiles do it, oh. but birds don't. I guess. I feel I like mean, most vertebrates don't. I mean, I yeah. I mean, like most vertebrates don't, but there are examples in like you have salamanders will regrow limbs. Lizards will regrow tails. Those are the only two examples I know of. If you I know more, please. I literally me. just went to a talk about this. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, I mean, like, I mean, fish don't have limbs, so I don't think. Yeah, they... but if a fish loses a fin, they don't regrow it, don't they? <laughs> I don't think um... so. I've never seen it. Anyway, um, anyway, I forget what point I was trying to make. <laughs> 
here. I think the point. Oh is yeah, the stem the... cells. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. So what I was what I was gonna talk a little bit about is that like I was trying to look into like grafting or genetic engineering, right? Mm-hmm. And like so grafting in plants mm-hmm. is where you like basically cut and attach two different plants together. Like you can have like an apple tree branch on a pear tree or whatever. Mm-hmm. And there is some research that shows that there can be like DNA transfer between the two species. Cool. But that's only in plants. <laughs> yeah. Like that does obviously you can't just like put a leg on <laughs> a mouse and be like DNA. It's transferred. Well, they, they did have that mouse that grew a human ear but i think that was from an embryonic stage i think so too i i think like as they talk about this more i'll look more into it but like Mm -hmm. because i looked into like transgenic animals which is where that's i was trying to figure out there's like the things where you can introduce like a plasmid as a vector that will just like introduce dna into Mm -hmm. an organism that already exists and Mm -hmm. That's how you can add, like, resistances to things, or... Or you can make mice with bioluminescent jellyfish. Oh my god. Expression. <laughs> I was gonna say, wait, what? <laughs> you can turn mice into jellyfish? It's like, what? Well, they, yes. No, th- there, yeah. Like, there have been uh, several instances of uh, much smarter scientists than me <laughs> putting DNA from one animal into, like, the embryonic stage of another one and having that actually be expressed in the adult animal like rabbits that glow in the dark yeah or the ear thing (laughs) yes yeah gfp the green fluorescent protein is a big one yeah but yeah in again a lot of this talks about plants because like no ethical questions around plants (laughs) yeah but like that's how you get like plants that already have pesticides in them essentially Mm. essentially what we're talking about with max is that they're basically gmos if you think about it (laughs) i don't think even basically i think explicitly explicitly (laughs) explicitly gmos gmo bird kids um (laughs) just because i'm on a sticker yeah just because i'm me (laughs) i did just want to say this fun thing where normally you have to introduce plasmids introduce it through like a vector like Mm -hmm. some some way but (laughs) um for nematodes if they're trying to get this plasmid into them, they just like put it in front of them and they eat it. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> and it works. And they just eat it and they're like, yum, let's and put this like, in my mm, DNA. New DNA. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. Anyway. These uh, kids can't possibly be 98% human. They must be at least partially nematode if they can grow bird wings. Oh, no. <laughs> there they must be the- some salamander in there. <laughs> The kids are actually, it's actually they're 98% human and 2% nematode, but then the part of the nematode is they fed them chicken yeah. at a very young oh. age, and then they started expressing some of the chicken phenotype. Oh no. <laughs> uh. Max did say that Angel had little baby chicken wings when she little was an infant. Little baby chicken wings. <laughs> yeah, they just put chicken wings right on there. <laughs> yeah, they're just like, here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I just think it's funny that GMO, we have GMO bird kids. GMO bird kids. <laughs> and GMO wolfman. Oh yeah, again, I'm not a geneticist, yeah. so... We're going to be a little beyond our expertise with this book, I think. Uh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I think, I just thought, I remember knowing what plasmas were just because I, I thought they were interesting. They are interesting. And that's the only part of genetics I remember. <laughs> nice. I feel like I mostly focused on chromosomal stuff because that was interesting to me and i don't think that's gonna come up <laughs> weird <laughs> weird yeah I, was, yeah I mean i'll i'll try and r- look more into it i feel yeah. as it comes up you know it's like the second episode or whatever yeah, we yeah. Have time. we'll have lots of time to get into they that. can drop more weird hints about it and we'll figure it out <laughs> The Maximum Ride Bird Kid wrap-up episode is just going to be us desperately trying to understand genetics. Genetics, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. I'm sure I'll figure it out by then. That's uh-huh. like two years from now. <laughs> it's true. Putting on my resume. <laughs> <Good> at <laughs> genetics now. 
Good <laughs> genetics now. Yeah. Uh, I need to come uh, up with a way to put this podcast on my resume in a way that sounds professional. I bet we can do it. Talk about biology a lot. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, bi-weekly it's... Um, conversations about biology and literature. Yeah. Yeah. Literature. Science indeed. outreach. It's certainly uh, science communication, probably. Science communication. It has to be. Yeah, public outreach. It shows that we can, like, commit to a schedule. <laughs> uh-huh. uh, can sound Listen, edit thing. and use uh, yes. audio editing software. Yeah. Can speak. <laughs> can good one. speak. Actually, isn't, <laughs> isn't verbal communication skills always one of the ones that's on a, a job application? You need to written and spoken communication. Yes. Be like, look, fam, I did two plus years of a podcast. And then they'll be like, oh, can I listen to it to assess your verbal communication skills? And we'll have to be like, absolutely not. <laughs> absolutely not. No, What's a podcast? <laughs> What's a podcast? Never heard of it. Just trust me. <laughs> Just trust. Just trust me. <laughs> I can't, I refuse to provide proof, but like, just trust me, bro. <laughs> yeah. How about you ask someone else to listen to it and then ask them how good it was? Yeah. Yeah. Nobody I interact with directly can listen to my podcast. <laughs> my boss does. Fun. It's fun. How far it's is fun because she? she's extremely supportive about everything. She's lovely. Anyway. Yeah. I don't know. The, like, I can't tell if they're starting to introduce like i i thought they had already introduced that they had wings quite honestly so did i yeah i thought so i mean they did they did in the first chapter yeah oh yeah okay because like in chapter seven at the beginning like at the end of chapter six max is like i fly and then in in seven it's like a reveal being like you see the dream wasn't that dreamlike it was real life and it's like wait but didn't you already reveal you had wings <laughs> yeah i feel like we knew this already i feel like we knew this it was only four chapters ago well, yeah and, and didn't they wasn't there a point when she was like describing the house and it was like the e specifically had something like the house specifically had something that helped them with flying I thought. oh yeah it was like not a big deal if you have wings <laughs> Yeah, because yeah. it's out over a cliff. Because it's over a cliff, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. Right off the cliff. I didn't imagine that, yeah. Yeah, okay. no, that all happened. I, I guess the reveal is that, surprise, we were made by science, because we have wings. <laughs> shocking. Yeah. Shocking. A shocking development. Whoa. Surprising conclusion. Surprising. I do like that they all fly in formation. I don't yeah. know why that's so endearing to me. <laughs> yeah. It's like, you know they practice it. And, like, Max is probably at the front because she's the leader. And then, like, the two youngest ones are, like, at the back. And also because, like, Gasman farts all the time. So he has to be at the back. He has to be at the back. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) There is also, like, a laminar flow reason. Yeah. For flying things to be in a formation. Yeah. I'm assuming this is a V-shaped formation. I'm assuming. (laughs) Yes. Also assuming. (laughs) Yeah. Put the babies at the back where it's easiest to fly. (laughs) So, yeah, so Max and Fang probably, like, trade off at the front because Max is the leader and Fang is, like, the big strong boy. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. break all the air. Yeah. Ugh. As opposed to the gas man who breaks all the wind. <laughs> no! Uh-huh. <laughs> Sorry, I, I couldn't I'm gonna hate this it. for this entire thing. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, it's, it's not fair to discriminate someone based off their stomach issues, okay? They can't, they're not just the comedic relief. No, <laughs> we're real, okay? <laughs> we have feelings. I feel like the gas man is just like a caricature of a yeah. seven-year-old boy a seven-year-old, or whatever. Yeah. It definitely is. But then the it's the, the thing that makes me mad is like in the way that Max first introduces him, it's like, oh, he's probably got IBS or something like that. And I'm like, it's fine if he farts a lot, but let's not bring... <laughs> yeah. IBS and actually oh, no, I got said issues that. into it. Did Max say didn't that? say that. That was me. <laughs> I swear that was in the book. I think it just says he has something funky going on with his digestive system. Oh, was it Hannah? Like Hannah! It, yeah, it was me. <laughs> You're actually upset with me, not James <laughs> Patterson. Not Hannah. But only for this specific thing. James yeah. Patterson is the rest of the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah James fair. Patterson is still the problem. I'm also the problem. It's me. <laughs> <I>. It's me. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cyberbullying Sam. Cyberbullying me. She's making fun of IBS. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, Anyways. Yeah. Uh, I'm just yeah. going to get mad at this almost every episode, probably. So I just Anyways. feel like now that I'm rereading it, I'm like, man, do they just keep adding superpowers because, like, this All was of these children thought. are two dimensional, yeah, <laughs> characters, and it's like, well, we gotta add character growth, but it's not growth; it's new powers. Yeah. This is my question. So when Max like does the whole thing where she like bursts the guy's eardrum or the eraser's eardrum, is that like part of her powers? Does she have some sort of banshee thing, or is that just like something that you can do? I think it's just an actual thing. I've read it in many books. But is that, like, something you could do realistic? I guess if you screamed loud enough, you could. But the way it No, was she does it with her hands. She, like, claps her hands over his ears to burst his eardrum. Oh, is that what it is? I thought she, yeah. like... Oh, see, the way I read it was I thought she, like, put her hands around his ear and then, like, yelled, yelled into, into them. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I thought, but I guess, again... I just misinterpreted the sentence. Okay, so that's even more confusing then. <laughs> no, so I know that like clapping your hands over someone's ears, you can okay. like burst their eardrums. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. that's fair. I didn't know that. I just thought that was like another one of her powers, but that's just me being unsure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, all, literally all I know about it is that I've read it in a lot of books. So, Me too. And they're I all fiction. not. Yep. So. It could be an urban legend. It could be. And in your cool. defense, Sam, Max does scream at the same time. That's just okay. Just mad. Okay, that's what, then I made yeah. my brain just, like, mush the two things together and was like, oh, this all happened in one thing. Yeah, it was all in the same sentence. <laughs> okay. All that's right. fair. Okay, yeah. that, well, that's all I had. That's not really on Sophie's point. I thought it was, but it's not. <laughs> so, we can well, know that's I don't okay. think any of the new superpowers have come up yet, but they no, will. No, I think Iggy's, like, super hearing. I, isn't that just because he's one... blind? No, I think book? he has super hearing. Oh. <laughs> I know he, the only thing I remember about Iggy is in the later books, he gets extremely emo and also learns how to feel colors. Wow. <laughs> and that's his superpower. Dang. Feel colors. I, I know, right? Interesting. Yeah. I wonder if he starts to be able to hear thoughts and we're going to have to talk about that oh, again. No, no well, Angel can no, do that's that. Angel. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> we already have to talk about it again. We already have to talk about it again. Damn it. For the uh. third book in a row. <laughs> third time and we still don't have a good answer for we it. We still don't know how it works. We still have to talk about, like, being super strong for no particularly good reason we still have to talk about flying like <laughs> how are all of these books the same <laughs> max is gonna fly up into the sky and punch the moon out of the sky <laughs> like edward <laughs> just gonna like fly up 12 miles even though now we know that if she did that all of her vitreous fluids would evaporate yep <sighs> and just gonna like read minds from a distance and yeah. like they're going they're all going to run at 69 meters per second which is the same speed as a jeep wrangler. <laughs> I'm surprised this Humvee wasn't a jeep wrangler frankly. <laughs> yeah. They had to make it different. <laughs> they had to make it different. <laughs> Cuz they knew that in 15 years we would be doing this podcast. No, they had just read Twilight and they were they like, just "Damn it, Twilight. erase it. We have to e erase her. Erase her it. Erase her it." Anyway, they have a fun uh, name. Why are, like eraser? Why are they called that? To disappear people? <laughs> is that what it, it oh, is? Do you think? I think that's so. Horrifying. Yeah, that is really horrifying. Like I can't think of any other reason than that's like their function. That's so scary. Why would they not just call them werewolves? Right? Or is they that can't. like it's copywritten by Stephanie Meyer? <laughs> yeah, because Twilight just came out. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep, for sure. I don't know why. Because it's science fantasy and you have to have different names for things. Yeah, maybe that'll get explained at some point. Maybe. Maybe it, like, erases their personalities because Ari is certainly not acting like a seven and or nine year old. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Side note, imagine making your own kid. <laughs> right? What the hell? <laughs> oh my god, I'm so offended by that. <laughs> like, hear me out. I am a scientist. 
I would turn me into my science experiment. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't do it on a seven-year-old child. No. No. Not no. at all. I, I mean, I guess we have to assume that they're morally bankrupt already because they did it to the bird kids. Yeah, I but guess. But still, so. like, humans are really good at othering people. Yeah, compartmentalizing. So, <laughs> yeah, so you can imagine that the scientists involved in this were able to put up that, like, kind of mental barrier of, like, those kids are different from me. Yeah. yeah. But being able to do that with your own child is, like, a whole other level like that's yeah <laughs> yep. right i guess at this point we still think jeb didn't do it <laughs> yeah um, i d- the... don't know who does it because at yeah. the moment they think jeb is dead <laughs> yeah i think it's supposed to be the first indication though that jeb isn't necessarily the good guy they think he is yeah if he even if he just allowed his son to be turned into an eraser and didn't yeah do it himself. like i think it's the it's supposed to be slight, maybe, foreshadowing to the fact that, like, he's not everything we think he is. But mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, because I mean, the alternative is that he left his kid behind while he helped these bird kids escape. Yeah, yeah exactly. Which is also... Which is also... <laughs> yeah, it's all, like, all scenarios don't paint him <laughs> in a good light. No, so. no. That's what it feels like to me is it's supposed to be that first indication that like something's not right here with this character. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's kind of emphasized at the end of, I believe it's chapter seven, where Ari tells Max that she doesn't understand that the erasers and like the school are the good guys. Yeah. And with what Max has told us about like, what they did to her and she mentioned some of like the training that the erasers do which involves being unleashed on a bunch of chimpanzees and taught to kill them Mm -hmm. nothing humane or anything that would get past uh, an ethics committee in the slightest (laughs) no so i feel like ari saying we're the good guys when all of these like terrible things have already been presented to us is supposed to indicate that like someone has told him that and convinced him of that yes maybe his father maybe someone else at the school but like clearly this kid has been brainwashed in some kind of way or max and the others have been brainwashed into like thinking that the school is bad when really they're good but i don't think i don't (laughs) i don't think that's the case (laughs) we we also find out in these chapters that the school uses chimpanzees to teach their erasers how to hunt and on your whole animal ethics welfare approval and science I don't think that would fly. <laughs> yeah. I would like no, someone to write fly. one of these yeah. books <laughs> who actually has to like do paperwork for animal experiments. Right? Right. That like, oh my God. <laughs> as bad as it is, that was like my first thought when I read this that it was chimps. <laughs> like, not, it is inherently bad that like the fact that they use chimps over anything else, like, it just seemed yeah, but very. Yeah, it would be like rats, right? <laughs> yeah, it just seemed like a very weird choice to take. Uh, actually, this is not going to word be worded very well, but chimps are very intelligent, and it just didn't seem yeah. like they they're not the natural prey of a wolf. So it's like, why would you <laughs> use chimpanzees other than the fact that stereotypically they're used a lot in media and movies as science experiments because they're so close to humans? So I was mm-hmm. like, okay, is this why they're using them? But to use a chimp in That's research. That's what I thought it was, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it probably was. But, like, to use chimps in research, as we just said, oh the paperwork God. yeah, would oh be God. astronomical. <laughs> Wild. Yeah. yeah, I did a few, like, animal ethics courses in university and, like, using animals in experimentation. And the hierarchy was basically, like, fish and invertebrates are at the bottom and primates and dogs were at the top and you had to have a really really good reason why you wanted to use a primate or a dog yeah yeah and like literally the reason is just optics but (laughs) yeah yeah like people get mad about it but people get really mad if you experiment on a dog they care less if it's a rat even though rats are basically tiny dogs yeah they really are yeah and they don't care at all if you're doing it on like a brittle star (laughs) yeah no no if it doesn't have a spine unless you're a cephalopod Yes. Yeah. If you're an octopus, people care, and that's it. Yeah. That's it. Or a squid mm-hmm. fish. Yeah. <laughs> or an anyway. 
Anyways. Anyway. <laughs> we could go on about animal discrimination yeah. <laughs> for a while, but I don't think that's necessary. This must be an alternate universe because A, this science has such good funding. And yes. B, <laughs> also that. <laughs> Yeah. No problems experimenting on humans and or chimpanzees. <laughs> yeah, didn't my brain didn't even flag experiments on humans, ethics, paperwork. It was like, no, the paperwork on the chimps. The paperwork yeah. on the chimps. Well, because the experiments on humans is like so science fiction. Yeah. yeah it's like, yeah, whatever. But experimentation on animals is a thing that actually happens. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Although maybe yeah. that's so science fiction to us. Like, yes. we should be True. clear. Th- yeah. Nowhere in the world are you allowed to experiment on humans in such a way. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Not that. Well, but various governments have done experimentation on humans for yeah. like military purposes. Yeah. And I believe we yeah. touched on that in like our last episode. But that implies to me, or this all implies to me that it must be some kind of like military operation because the military gets a lot of funding and a lot of secrets. Yeah. Which is why there are racers who are being trained to hunt humans. Yeah. That's why their hair is so big. It's full of secrets. (laughs) I was like, what? This is a mean girl's reference. (laughs) Yeah. No. (laughs) But the funny ears are so big. Is that why the eraser's fur is so big? What? I don't know. I just wanted to say it. <laughs> I liked it a lot. No, it's a good reference. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, ideally you can't <laughs> experiment on people. Yeah, yeah in a but, perfect world, yeah. no experimenting on human infants. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. probably as recently as 10 years ago. Probably still yeah. were. Listen... Anyway, in the United States, anyway. they sure did take a bunch of uh, South American children and just disappear them. That's, yep. yep. <laughs> I hate that. I mean, uh. you disappeared next. It's fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Don't experiment. Anyway. Okay, so the conclusion is don't experiment on humans. Don't experiment on humans, but also GMOs are fine. <laughs> yeah. GMOs are fine. GMOs are fine. <laughs> Yeah, like we should, probably Even should talk about that in real life, huh? More things are yeah. probably GMOs than you think, and you eat them every day, and they're fine. Yeah. Almost all human food, unless it's like wild-caught seafood, has been modified in some way to be more exactly. suitable for human consumption, whether that is through like direct genetic manipulation or selective breeding, Yeah, and therefore to assert that anything that has been genetically modified as harmful is completely asinine and also just like a completely useless thing to say. Yeah, yep. genetically modified doesn't really mean it, it means much. nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it, in in this term in which it's used like as a buzzword for like agriculture and human food, it means nothing. Everything has been modified genetically yeah. at some point in its existence to be more palatable for humans. Yeah. Like, every banana is a clone. (laughs) Every banana is a clone. There are, like, hundreds of different breeds of apples that are just bred specifically for certain traits that humans like. Yeah. Which does not always correlate to better taste. Apparently, most apples on the market currently were bred that way to look better and to hold up to transportation better, but not to taste better. Interesting. Which is why so many apples are gross. (laughs) Wow. Wow, yeah. <laughs> I went to like a whole talk about it in like 2018 or 2019 of a student who was like working on breeding a tastier apple that also held up well to transportation. And it was one of the most fascinating things I've ever Whoa. heard because I'd never thought about any of it a second in my life. Damn. <laughs> Agricultural schools, man. They do cool stuff. Yeah. I just like that A, all bananas are clones. And oh, yes. the reason that banana medicine and banana candy doesn't actually taste like banana is because the current clones is a different species because the original bananas were clones and all got the same disease and went extinct. <laughs> <laughs> womp womp. Womp womp. So that's why your banana medicine doesn't taste like banana. Anyway, let's talk about <laughs> bird people. <laughs> bird people. Yeah, I want to talk about brassicas, but I think that would be another hour yeah <laughs> there are a lot of them there's a lot of them and they're all genetically modified and through all... selective breeding and they're all delicious except for kale which tastes like dirt sure does 
I want to say that <laughs> don't worry. This Douglas fir that is 175 oh my God. feet in the air is the correct height for a Douglas fir. Oh, it that's sure good is. to know. Yeah. <laughs> so Max, this is when Max um, goes to have her tantrum. I not a temper tantrum. No, yeah. She's having valid feelings yeah. about yes. losing her baby sister. <laughs> yeah. No, she's extremely emotional about it, and I think that is an extremely normal way to feel in this situation. Yeah. Yeah. She's a traumatized 14-year-old. <laughs> yeah. And goes to punch a tree about it. <laughs> uh-huh. But extremely specifically says that the she lands in a tree 175 <laughs> feet in the air. <laughs> uh-huh. And uh, yeah, Douglas Firs can get way taller than that. So don't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> yeah, I looked that up and I was like, why 175 feet specifically? Like, surely that must be at the very like tip top of a big tree. And it's just like an average yeah. tree. That's like 50 meters. And I think Douglas Firs can get up to like 100 meters. That's they fine. They sure can. Yeah. Yeah, I do like the implication that w- here that like, oh, she overshot so she had to like scrabble to catch hold which is like <laughs> how so do scary. they land in trees they aren't right they shouldn't be able to <laughs> i assume it's like i don't know if you guys have ever gone to one of those like zip lining like adult theme parks i've gone but you like are you about to say they just run into the tree yeah, they have to, like, yeah. land on their feet and then wrap their arms around the branch so they don't fall off. Like, that's what I'm kind of assuming. Yeah. <laughs> they well, like, the other something. thing is that with a 13-foot wingspan, how right? do you even get into the trees? <laughs> right? You fall from above? <laughs> I have no idea. I assume she was at the top of the tree, again, like a cartoon, where you can just, like, squat up at the top branches. Although she's, like, a full human with wings so she probably is too heavy for like <laughs> the branches at the tip top she, she like grabs on and the top of the tree just like just folds bends over, over. <laughs> like in the charlie brown <laughs> yeah christmas tree yeah just sadly punching the tree <laughs> on the ground oh poor max uh, yeah because i mean sad. they don't have a little grabby feet like a no, bird does don't. i wonder what <laughs> shoes they wear Probably Maybe those none. like toe shoes. Toe shoes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The toe running shoes. It must be. Were those around in 2005? They gotta uh, be. They gotta be. I feel like no, but when we we can dream. Toe shoes. I remember <laughs> first seeing them. I was at the tennis club and my friend had them and it would have been in high school. So so actually, yeah, I feel like I remember them coming out in high school. We gra- I graduated in 2010, so it could have been yeah 2006, 2007. Maybe they could have existed. Who made the toe shoes? Who made the toe shoes? <laughs> Who made the toe shoes? Wasn't there a? <laughs> oh, it was like 1999. They've been around for a while. Wow, apparently. Amazing. okay. So they definitely all wear toe shoes. They definitely um... all wear toe shoes. <laughs> what? Did... <laughs> Don't they have a name? What's Their the brand. The brand is like barefoot shoe or whatever. Weird. Okay. Barefoot running shoes. Yeah. For running and being a bird person. Uh huh. Yeah. Maybe they wear like crampons, but in the opposite direction, so they can cramp onto the <laughs> tree. <What? laughs> <just> break both <laughs> their knees <laughs> yeah. landing on this tree. <laughs> Maybe they wear like golf shoes with the little cleats. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah, I just and then when like... they run on land, they're like, yeah, they slip on rock. Maybe they do a mix of like flying and parkour to get through Ooh, trees. Yeah. yeah, they gotta like tuck their wings in and just do some like gymnastics. Yeah, around the branches. <laughs> or maybe they're like, I don't know if you've ever seen videos of like goshawks flying no. through things. No, they no. have oh, like, yeah. I think they're like the most maneuverable raptor. And there's, like, videos of, like, obviously, like, trained goshawks going through cutouts between trees or whatever. So you can see, like, how narrow they can manipulate their wings to be, like, perfectly straight lines so they can get through this super tiny spot. Yeah. It's kind of wild. Fully recommend watching some of those videos. And maybe they're like that. They just have extremely precise control of their wings. But doesn't that then also, again, imply that they fly completely horizontally? If they're able to do that. 
Yeah, I was trying to think about that, and I was like, is there any way that once they have speed, but no, right? Like, like if I they mean, dove. Maybe. Yeah, if they dove, presumably it would be. Their body would go. At first, and they would yeah. go vertical. But like, every other time, they're definitely just. <laughs> they're definitely just dangling. I still down. like the the ball. <laughs> The fetal position yeah. theory, personally. <laughs> the fetal position theory is still pretty good. <laughs> just, eh. I mean, that would make it easier to land because you just, like, get above a branch yeah. and put your feet down. <laughs> your feet down. I wonder if they can hover. or oh, <laughs> Probably yeah. not, right? Because they're not, like, mixed with hummingbirds. Oh, my God. The, these chapters say they have raptor vision, which yes. implies to me that the two percent of them that is bird is probably raptor. Yeah, although can some raptors can some raptors like hover? I feel like the diving um, ones can. Kestrels are the ones that I know that are known for it. Yeah, but they do like the thing where if you watch them, it looks terrifying because their head doesn't move. Oh, nice. Like, their body is moving to hover, and their head is just, like, perfectly still. <laughs> yeah. To train on whatever they're looking at. That's so cool. I love yeah. that. So I'm imagining that, but in a human, which uh, is terrifying. It is terrifying. <laughs> Especially, <laughs> I'm imagining them doing, like, a hawk stare, but coming from a 14-year-old yeah. who is hovering in the air in the fetal position, just staring at you. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> scary oh my god yeah once again we have to talk about how much of their brain case is actually taken up with eyeball <laughs> yeah we did talk about that i think it was in chapter 15 when we, back when we were doing twilight but then it would have also come up in chapter 26 when we explained the twilight vampire so if you want sophie's really good math about <laughs> eyeballs <laughs> i think it was that half of edward's skull was eyeball <laughs> Yes, yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, so. which is a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's lot a of lot. eyeball. It's a lot to consider. How uh, big do you think, to think about. these bird kids' eyeballs are? I feel like they're just normal size, but enhanced. They're just like normal. Yeah. Yeah. Enhanced. Yeah. That was on eagles, which had the best vision. Right. So it depends which raptor they mm. are working with. <laughs> presumably one that lets them retain some gray matter in their heads. <laughs> one would hope. <laughs> one would hope. I mean, they do act like people. Yeah. So they probably have a fair amount of people brain left. Yeah, that's fair. Because, like, raptors are not that smart, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they don't got a lot going on up there. You can tell when you look at them head on and you're like, mm, head like, empty. Mm. There's not Nothing. a thought in that head. There's a, <laughs> not, not a single, single thought behind <laughs> those eyes. <laughs> no. <laughs> My favorite thing is seeing pictures of raptors taken from a direct front view. God, it's so funny. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. Yeah, there were like a couple things in these chapters that I was like, oh, maybe this bird thing. And then I was like, I'm going to wait. Just yeah. In case. <laughs> yeah. Like Sam mentioned earlier, it's been all action so far. There hasn't yes. been a lot of time to like get into those little like asides <laughs> details. Yeah, asides. Yeah. Like even the setting, all we know about it is that like they were in an e house and now they're not. Yeah, and there are Douglas firs. Yeah, around in the forest. In the forest, I, I a have tree. a feeling though. <laughs> That a lot of this book is going to be like that. I mean, yeah. that's what like James Patterson's entire career is based off of, is making these fast-paced, short-chapter books that people can read quickly, and then they keep buying them, and it's like drugs. Okay. Or they can read them very slowly over the course of <laughs> a year and a half a or two half. years. <laughs> we are like uh... the complete opposite of what this demographic is of yeah. the James Patterson's, uh, <laughs> the Clive Owens, the Alex Crosses, the Tom Clancy's. I'm trying to think of all these like authors that probably are mostly ghostwriters that they just write yeah. these like short like airport books. Airport books. Yeah. And, um, just like quick fiction it's like yeah. you go to a library and you see a whole wall of james patterson and i can guarantee oh you God. all of those books have chapters that are like two pages long and there's probably a 200 of them dan brown is another one he hasn't written as much 
but his books are in the classic format of this quick action, all action, yeah. no substance. I really <laughs> noticed that in these ones because I was like, wow, they really just aren't explaining where the erasers come from. Yeah, they just well, yeah, exactly. Out of the nowhere. erasers. Well, because especially it's like the erasers dropped down like spiders or whatever, and yeah. then they have to go to a car to go to a helicopter. Did yeah. the helicopter not drop them off? <laughs> Don't know. And uh, I'm if the helicopter did the drop trees. them off, then like, why did they also need a car? Yeah. That's also what I was confused about. Why isn't there a ladder that you climb up and that brings you up? Like, I'm assuming we're living in technology here. Like, you, you, you've got to <laughs> yeah. have something. I'm almost like, why don't you have beam me of Scotty technology? Like, back in 2005, they didn't have ladders, Sam. Yes, mm-hmm. but they've mm-hmm. genetically modified <laughs> humans. But they did have beam me up Scotty technology. Yeah, but no ladders. <sighs> no ladders. <laughs> No, I guess, like, the the theory, the only thing I could think is that the helicopter is very loud, so they had mm. to land it somewhere oh, far right. enough away that yeah. they couldn't hear it, and then the car could only drive as close as its noise mm. level, and, and they then they, like, for Iggy. yeah, and so then they, like, got in the trees and dropped down on them, I guess. Yeah, they were just lurking up in the trees, like, yeah. Spider-Man was my instinct for some yeah. reason. I don't think like, Spider-Man has ever lurked in a tree. <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I think like he's Jasmine from cities. Del Toro Quest. Yeah, sure. <laughs> she lurks in trees. Uh, a reference again that everybody can enjoy. Can enjoy. <laughs> Everyone. Yes. Someday we're gonna read a Del Toro Quest on this podcast, and you will all be shocked because it will just be delight the whole time. We will have nothing to criticize. Yeah, we can't do it because that's all there will be. Uh, yeah. There won't Look be anything for... to talk about it except just me and Sophie going, oh, and this part, it was so good. <laughs> and then in this part, that was so good. And oh my God, this part. And Sam will be like, I didn't read this book when I was seven and it actually sucks. <laughs> yeah, it'll be Patreon bonus episodes and it'll just be me and Hannah. <laughs> yeah, just it's probably for us. the best. I don't want to ruin your childhood. And we'll read favorite. the whole book and then talk about it in one uh, episode. We have to do this anyway. at some point. <laughs> the, so one other thing. Yeah. Super quick. I wanted to say is that at the end of the eighth chapter, Max implies that like the reason Angel gets stolen is because the scientists want to literally take her apart. Yeah. I was (laughs) also like confused about that. The erasers want to kill them. The scientists want to dissect them. But like, why? Yeah, like, I would have thought there would be some level of bravado being like, well, you can't kill me. Yeah, they're incredibly valuable. They're incredibly valuable, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I guess not. <laughs> I guess not. I mean, I guess for a good experiment, you're probably going to want to <laughs> euthanize to get the results, but, like, come on. <laughs> yeah. But also, like, Angel's still a juvenile. Yeah. Like, you'd think they'd want her to at least reach maturity before they cut her apart yeah also that's only an n equals one they really gotta get at least two more of them right (laughs) yeah they they only made six of these kids if we assume that it was like a pilot study okay listen (laughs) sometimes you can only get six samples okay (laughs) are you feeling personally attacked for some reason sometimes maybe you're (laughs) doing deep sea arctic stuff and you can only get like six to nine samples Mm, but then your stats won't be very good. Shut up. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like you need at least a couple more. You need way more than six before you can draw any sort of conclusion. Ugh. <laughs> I'm just not going to say anything. Because <laughs> yeah. you're the only one here who actually specialized in experimental design and I'm just being a shit for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to get a master's anything. degree out of it and that's all that matters. <laughs> Sophie's is not the worst designed experiment i've ever seen i'll just say that yes not the worst not the not worst. The hell worst. yeah <laughs> that's what i live for yeah not i did my worst. honors degree on data that was collected by other people and then i didn't do anything else and now my job is to read about the science that other people do so like i have no idea yeah of, about experimental design and therefore i feel extremely qualified <laughs> to comment upon it See, my thing is that 
my background was in vertebrate paleontology. So like <laughs> when you're like, oh, what samples do you have? It's like I have one inch of a jaw of a nine foot long dinosaur and that's my <laughs> samples it's like interesting cool interesting <laughs> we yeah. like to extrapolate here in paleontology <laughs> yeah <laughs> listen for there's sure. nothing wrong with a small sample size as long as you acknowledge the limitations by which that sample size gives you and you don't make any erroneous conclusions based off that small sample size so I have beyond the scope of this project every third <laughs> sentence. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. Like I think it's fine. I think small sample sizes will still they still give you extremely valuable information. However, to make a solid scientific conclusion based off that small sample size is something that should be done extremely cautiously. So what you're saying is they will get some information out of murdering this oh seven year old that they've abused for their for her entire life. Yeah. But it yeah. won't be that valuable to anybody. <laughs> yeah. Well Great. Because Congrats, Angel. <laughs> how do we know that Angel isn't an outlier? Yeah. Oh my god, she's such an outlier. She's such she's a freak. Got- magic brain power she's got a magic brain she's evil but just look at the variability in the kids and their inherent superpowers that in itself shows you that you can have a sample size of six and your distribution is all over the place so if you want to quantify that distribution to figure out what the average person is if you do this to them you need a much larger sample size and there is so why statistics <laughs> So what you're saying is that the school should go kidnap more children and turn them yeah. into birds. Yeah. For, I for do not saying. advise the school. <laughs> for I the am, science? I am not on contract. You're not affiliated with the school? To- my opinions do not reflect those of my employer. And- <laughs> All views are my own. I am not yeah. advocating for any uh, inherent research on children or anything. I am just stating... The rules of science and what makes good science. <laughs> that is all. Not to yeah, not to muddy the waters even further. Oh, I no. think Angel might be prenatal. Yeah. Messing with her. I seem to remember that's why she's so special. She's so oh, special. so they messed with her in the womb, but the rest yeah. were out of the womb. See, yeah. that's a whole other like that's so, more again, variability. Yeah, they shouldn't even we can't even consider them into the same distribution no, because they're, they're different two different genetic experiments. Graphing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Angel is a sample size of one. Yep. I will say She's too, it like is shocking girls. how many papers are published with an N equals one. So <laughs> well, what am I? I'm a joke. I'll be next, baby. <laughs> <laughs> you, I've told you, you have a proper N equals three. <laughs> you haven't seen my second chapter yet. <laughs> that is true. This is fair. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, we're done talking about these chapters. <laughs> yeah, before we get ourselves into hot water. <laughs> yeah, before yes. we talk about anything else unrelated, let's talk about what else we're reading. I finished Nona the Ninth this morning. It was so good. <laughs> Did you also start it this morning? <laughs> no, I started it like four days ago. Oh. But I messed up on Goodreads, so <laughs> <laughs> I promise I read it <laughs> in four days. Nice. Yeah, it was really good. I still didn't really know what was going on for most of the book, which I guess is just how the series goes. But yeah, it was really good. And then I also read Piranesi. Pretty I good loved one. Piranesi. Two good books. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Both Great extremely books. weird. I stayed up till 2 a.m. reading both oh of them. Oh my God. <laughs> so that's just me. That's awesome. Yeah. What about you guys? I read or finished reading The Lighthouse Witches by C.J. Cook and it was exceptional. I loved it. Basically a thriller and literary fiction but fantastical elements involved in it and magical realism. It was really cool. I liked it. Great read. And then I decided to start reading To Sir Philip with Love which is the fifth Bridgerton book and I hate it because I hate Philip. <laughs> oh. I'm determined to finish it, but I say this with all of the feelings in my body. A fuck you, Sir Philip. Oh. That that's is all. Wow. That's, that's me. Wow. Mm-hmm. Ringing endorsement. 
Uh huh. Yeah, I'm gonna. I don't think I'm gonna read any more going forward. <laughs> I'm, I think I'm done with the Bridgerton books until mm. the show maybe catches up to the later books. This one, I'm just like, I cannot with these men. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> Well, I started a couple of books since last time. Um, one physical book and one audiobook. I'm finally listening to The Winners by Frederick Bachman, which I am really excited about. And it's so good. Does someone get shot in this one? I don't know. It <laughs> seems like someone might get shot in this one. Surely this time. <laughs> Surely this time someone will actually get shot, unlike the last four books where he's been like, mm, someone's going to get shot, and then they never do. But I'm <laughs> I'm confident that in this one someone's gonna get shot for sure. Yeah, for sure, for sure. For sure, for sure. I just oh, I love his books. I love this series in particular. It's just really good. And then I'm also rereading the site by David Clement Davies, which is actually something that would fit into our podcast. It's a book that I read when I was a preteen that came out in 2003. <laughs> and it's wow. animal fantasy about a wolf pack that uh gets magic powers <laughs> wow that's fun it is fun it's by the same author who wrote firebringer which i've talked about before so two extremely different vibes yeah I'm cultivating <laughs> here uh, <laughs> and when this episode comes out perhaps i will be reading or have read vicious by v e schwab which is yes. our january book club book of the month Woo. i'm extremely excited about it me too. I've been wanting to read that one for so long. I said that last time. <laughs> That's what book club is for. Heck yeah. I love the Midlight Book Club, you guys. Midlight Book Me Club. Too. It's great. Hell we yeah. read so many good books. Yeah. Uh, with that said, if you liked this chapter of Midlight Crisis, consider rating and reviewing us on Spotify or your podcatcher of choice. You can talk to us and find fun related content on social media. We are at Midlight Pod on Facebook, Instagram, and tiktok currently still on twitter sophie are we on tumblr oh yeah i made a tumblr there's nothing on <laughs> it right now but uh we're at midlight pod on tumblr wow i should say there will be things oh uh, yeah currently, <laughs> currently i made it like a day ago <laughs> that's fine that's like two months ago uh <laughs> <laughs> so again now you can also find us on tumblr where sophie will be doing chaotic things without supervision yeah oh, no <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine. But if you don't like any of those, we're also on YouTube at Midlight Pod there as well. Uh, and on our website, midlightpod.podbean.com. I almost said and on YouTube again. That's not how that goes. <laughs> Sam? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Max, much like most of us, when even minorly inconvenienced... Or like Hannah, specifically when she has to drive literally anywhere in any oh. condition. <laughs> or when you have to take a fish to the vet. <laughs>